Today, we're going to talk about the experience of people who have experienced God. Now, as we've seen, there's various views of God. There's the um, personal, transcendent God, God the Father. And there's the impersonal, imminent God. The ultimate ground of existence. And we're going to talk about people who've experienced God as imminent, as ultimate ground of existence. Because we're looking for correlates with uh, people's experience of God and our own theology. Um, now, of course, we can acknowledge that God as a transcendent, transcendental person is a more common view of God. And there are people who have experienced God that way. They report experiences of Jesus or Krishna or whatever. And we'll talk about that some other time. That idea of God is very common. In Christianity, it's the, the opening words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, that's person, who art in heaven. Not here, but there. And we saw how this idea of God arises naturally from just a child learning about the world. Here's one hierarchy, hierarchy we saw. And here's a simple, simplified one. The idea is that the child learns there's inanimate matter, and then there's uh, animated matter, a uh, thing like a doll, which is inanimate, but the child can see it as animate. And then there's animals, and there's other children, and then there's the, the parents. And above all that is the God who is a person who's kind of like a super parent. So that's one view of God. But our view of God is that God is imminent and uh, impersonal. That's our the view of God that we're developing in this theology, at least for now. And if for pictures, the, that view of God is, um, I find in, in Hindu pictures um, from India, the idea of the man or woman who retires in solitude and goes within to try to contact the God within that's imminent, that's everywhere. And we'll see how um, many people have experienced that as a light. Okay, so mysticism is what we're talking about. We're talking about mystics. And a mystics, um, mysticism is used in a lot of ways. The word is used in a lot of ways. Sometimes it means fortune telling or something like that. But the proper definition is experience of ultimate reality. And even union, that, that goes beyond experience. We'll talk about that, too, at another time. But we're just talking about experience. And return to the source of being. That sounds very much um, imminent. Source of being. Okay, here's a woman who wrote, she, in 1945, she had an experience. And her experience was of light. And it was um, not just like uh, turning up the light in the room. But it was a supernal light, a supernatural light to her. And it was everywhere. And it was a, an experience that she describes as overwhelmingly good. And she was 45. No, I believe she was 42. Okay, anyway, we can do the math. But 40 years later, she still had not come fully to terms with that experience. So it was a very impactful experience. Next, we'll go to an account by St. Augustine, who is one of the great saints of uh, Christianity. And he talks about an experience where, now, we've spoken about the eye of the flesh and the eye of the soul in a previous clip. And he says, with the eye of his soul, he saw the light unchangeable. And we have talked about the ultimate ground of existence. Of, uh, light would be perhaps a metaphor, but maybe more than a metaphor. It would be a way that we experience the ultimate ground of existence. And uh, Augustine goes on to say, he that knows the truth knows that light, because that light is his God. Pascal had an experience. And apparently uh, it was very impactful. He wrote uh, an account of the experience, or a little uh, memento of the experience, on a piece of parchment, and he kept it close to his breast. Um, in his, in his jacket. And this was a short experience from about half past 10 until half past 12, two hours. He says fire 
in caps, fire. He's experiencing probably uh, something like the light that that woman experienced. Now, he experiences a supernatural, uncreated light, and he immediately attributes it to the gods of his uh, culture. God of Abraham, Isaac, God of Jacob, not of philosophers, not of savants. And the idea here is we're philosophizing, we're talking about this. But the idea is that you can experience God, uh, the experience is not a thought. It's more like putting your hand into an electric socket and getting a shock rather than just a thought that you have. And I believe that's what Pascal had, an experience of fire, of light. And then he had described it as an experience of God, the gods that he, he, he um, was acquainted with. Uh, Evelyn Underhill, who wrote this um, famous book about mysticism, describes the experience of some mystics, and she describes them as light, ineffable. That means kind of undescribable. Uncreated. Uncreated means eternal. If something was never created, it must have always existed. Pure, undifferentiated being pure, undifferentiated being. If you think after the Big Bang, all of the energy in the universe was just, they, they talk about even the four uh, forces, the strong nuclear, weak nuclear, gravity and ultramagnetism. They, they, they scientists speculate that all those forces were one force uh, right after the Big Bang, before they differentiated. And so you've got pure, undifferentiated being, uncreated light, light that was never created, that must be eternal. Uh, our ground and origin, and there we go again. Now in Buddhist scripture, in Buddhism, there's a scripture that talks about self-originated light. There again, self-originated, uncreated. The idea is that it owes its existence to nothing but itself. Eternally unborn. There again, it's eternal, non-created. Non-created and self-originated seems slightly contradictory, but reality. Now the idea here is that in philosophy, there's a strain of thought which says that for something to be fully real, it has to be eternal. The things that go in and out of existence are real in the colloquial sense, in the conventional sense, but real with a capital R is something that's eternal. And um, the clear light of reality shines in our mind, but we look for it elsewhere. So the idea is the, um, the experience of this uncreated light is an experience that we don't need to, um, well, we need, the idea is that it's already there and we just go within and we have to find it. An Islamic mystic, I am the one real, now the idea is, rather than identifying with our ego, we can identify with our ultimate ground of existence, in which case we could say we're the one real. Now, it'd be better to say the one real is us. In other words, the wave isn't the ocean, the ocean is the wave. He went on to say, I am the absolute, the true reality. Now we'll finish with a, um, a mystic from the Eastern Orthodox branch of Christianity. Uh, after the Roman Empire fell, Christianity was united, but eventually uh, in the West, in uh, Rome, in the East, in Constantinople, it divided in 1054 AD. There was a schism, and uh, we got Western Christianity and Eastern Orthodox. Now, in Eastern Orthodoxy, there's a tradition called Hesychasm, and it's a mystical tradition. And they, the, the monks or the people who follow this tradition, seek experiential knowledge of God. Again, experiential. More like touching um, an, uh, an electric a wire, a hot wire, rather than thinking thoughts as we're doing now. Okay, this man's name is Simon. He's called the New Theologian. He ranks very high in Eastern Orthodoxy from what I've read. God is light, infinite, incomprehensible, simple. Remember, non-composite, not, not, no parts, timeless, eternal. Pure, simple, divine light. It illuminates us 
those who have never seen this light have not seen God, for God is light. That's pretty unequivocal. And he goes on to say, and this gets into the experiential aspect, if a man possesses with him any, uh, the light of the Holy Spirit, now there again, he's personifying it, the light of the Holy Spirit. Uh, if he's unable to bear it, he uh, basically has a rough time, falls on the ground prostrate, cries out in great fear. He's a man like whose entrails have been set on fire, etc. The idea is that this is an experience. And I even read once that hell is the divine light experienced by those who are not ready to experience it. So the idea is that this experience of the um, uncreated, imminent, um, impersonal God is, can be a very, very intense experience, and if somehow someone gets this experience without being ready for it, it can be um, uh, challenging. Okay, so what we've done is I've tried to show that our idea of God is, well, I've showed it before that it's in other religions, but now I'm trying to show you that there are people who have experienced experienced it. And those people are often acknowledged in their own religious traditions to be mystics and saints and people who have experienced God.